Okay, hello again guys. So, yeah, so I've just come to realize that uh, Facebook Live has more functions on my personal page than it does on my business page. So I've decided to, decided to redo it this way round. Aha. Hi there, Robert. Do you want me to bring you, bring you on camera? Just let me know, just leave a little message down below and I'll do so. Let's have a look here. Okay, you're there. Fantastic. Good man. And I'm going to see if I can get this on my Max Strength Holistics page as well. Hopefully, this should work out quite nicely. Okay, I'm inviting you. Hmm. Okay, interesting. I'll do it that way. Okay, so consider yourself invited. Let's see what happens. Did you receive my invite? Just let me know. If I haven't, then um, leave me a message. Hey, there we oh, go. It's you. It's Robert Gardner. Finally, we get to chat. <laughs> you caught me before bed. It's really late here. It's like three in the morning. So, oh, dude. I mean, you know, if you, um, yeah, thanks for, um, no, no yeah, it's fine. Thanks for uh, taking that. You just, I was literally, I was like five minutes getting ready, getting ready to go to bed, but I saw it come up and was like, hey, let's see what's going on. So, I don't have to be up early yeah. tomorrow. Yeah, no, I've just, um, yeah, I'm, I've, you know, I'm, I'm taking on your advice and like, you know, taking advantage of technology and, uh, and what yeah. have you. So I'm, uh, and I'm also, I'm also trying to build up my confidence muscles and, uh, doing the whole live chat yeah. thing. And, uh, yeah, so that's what I'm, uh, I've had, I'm doing. You know, I've had many conversations with you and I really think long-term the reason you're going to win is because you're willing to make mistakes and you're willing to keep trying things. Um, Somebody I was talking to the other day said that the perfect is the enemy of the done. The perfect is the enemy of the done. Yeah. Well, yeah. That's, so, um, I mean, a lot of, a lot of other people have been, just have been approaching. Done. Don't worry about yeah, it being yeah. perfect. Yeah. Yeah, no, absolutely. Yeah, it's, it's, it's actually quite quite true. There's a lot of people that I've been speaking to. Um, they're saying that, you know, they're, they're going to wait until it's until it's perfect. They're going to... They're going to do a nice, um, they're going to do like a really nice video to put on their website and everything. And I'm thinking, well, the thing is, you know, you're waiting all this time. You're going to probably wait at least three months before you, you do this nice video. Yeah. The thing is that, that it's, and it's only one video. You need to be constantly putting stuff out, at least I think about on average about once a week to, yeah. um, to get any sort of response, yeah. to get any sort no, of, I, you know, I, I, of the, the I can if I could convey pride towards any therapist I've talked to in the past year, it's you. You constantly, I mean, you're, you're as active, if not more active than I am. And the thing is, like, there's not many therapists who are putting out as much content as consistently as I am. And then therapists are asking, like, how, they're basically asking, how do I win with money? And it's like, because I've continued to do this for years, this same mm. process of making mistakes of getting it done. It's not perfect, but you continue to just respond to your audience and communicate with people. 
Yeah, well, that's, I think I think I'm I'm getting a better idea of like what sort of content I need to be putting out there. I mean, there's there's things that I've I've put out, you know, which I I thought was just like absolute, you know, I I just thought I need I need to do something. I don't know what I need to do, but I need to do something. I need to put out something out there that's gonna that's gonna produce some sort of result. And if I get a negative response, that's that's better than what I've been getting, and that was nothing, you know. So yeah. even yeah. Um, I, I don't know if you've seen some of my Instagram stuff that I've I've put out there. It's just me talking into the camera, just walking out of the gym, saying, "Okay, I did these exercises, and this is how I feel after, and this is the amount of progress I feel like I've made." Um, and I've actually had like two or three people saying, "Like, would you stop doing this already?" You know, it's annoying. But that that for me that was great because at least somebody was acknowledging me for once. Yeah. You know, <laughs> so at least I've got some sort of you know some sort of um, uh, communication you know, with people. Oh, it, there's a weird thing with uh, social media and thinking of it at, for business and then thinking of it as advertising. So, for instance, you know, people understand when they see my social media that I'm selling things. But at the same time, it's building personal brands. You know, like um, I've talked about this, I've gained weight in the past couple of years and haven't been exercising regularly. And I'm fully prepared to start exercising again and just documenting that process where you're making fun of the fact that you've gained weight. You know, okay, you're yeah. making fun of like lifting weights. Oh, I hate this shit, you know. <laughs> but the thing is, people respond to the sort of authenticity that comes from it. They, they find mm. me more relatable. They, they understand with that, understand that. And some of the, the, the feedback I get on my social media, it's often like little funny posts or little goofy things I do. Like occasionally I may take out my Instagram and like I'll be brushing my teeth and there's like foam all over my face or whatever. And people will respond to that just because it's funny. But, but there's no educators in the massage industry that I see that are putting out content like that. So to me, it stands out. It adds a degree of, you know, I was uh, Mike joking, Michael Ortiz is here, and I did an interview with Michael, and I was drinking a beer, and I made oh, sure yeah. to drink a beer, because I've been telling people that's what I'm going to do on every interview. It's like, God, does Robert drink constantly? <laughs> <laughs> yeah, well, I think, I, think it's, I think it's important that we, uh, you know, that we show, we show the, the human like, aspect. If, if, something, if something is a little bit too, too polished, you tend to think, well, yeah. what, what's this guy like, you know? It is in his day, you know, in his day to day life, you know, and I think there's a, there's, there's a, you know, it's keeping it, keeping it real, I think is the best. Uh, oh my God, it's Michael Ortiz. Yo, yo. Hey, you doing, mate? Yeah, it's good to, good to see you. Where, whereabouts is Michael Ortiz based? Sorry, I shouldn't be talking, talking uh, to Michael. Michael, Ortiz, Michael is in Las Vegas. Las Vegas. Okay. Yes. Yeah, so what's the, you know, Michael, if you'd like to, you know, respond to us and, uh, let us know what's the what's the massage scene like out there. Um, yeah, yeah, if you're ever in London, my friend. Vegas, sorry. Vegas to Texas to London, like yeah, I had no idea. <laughs> yeah, London. I feel like I, for, for me, I feel like I'm having to educate uh, consistently. You know, uh, yeah. hence hence why I want to be able to. Uh, you know, it's, it's good. It's good to have a platform like like this, so I can tell people, look, you know, this is. When people when people look at I mean there's 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 places that I've worked in I've I've worked in uh, like salons in the past and I've been there for like about a year and they're saying they've they've turned around to me and said like oh well you know the reason why you're you're not busy is because what you do is just a luxury and I'm just like absolute face palm you know I've been I've been there for that long and they still have no idea what I do you know it's like I'm dealing with hairdressers yeah. and beauty therapists and nail technicians and oh all yeah of them seem yeah. to have an idea they they all seem to have their own idea of what I do and actually haven't got a clue and i'm like banging my head up against a brick wall but this is like this is all like you know pre yeah this is all pre instagram and pre um youtube channels and that's that's sort of stuff yeah. you know i think there were youtube I, channels you know, around but it wasn't yeah the frustration the, the frustration is something i've experienced and still continue to experience all these years in the the frustration with feeling like you have the best service imaginable and it's challenging to sell because the public doesn't understand what we do. But I've mm. learned over the years to try to take that energy of frustration and go, okay, make better content, mm. make, make better videos. Just, and mm. the thing is, it, basically it gets to a point where 
you know, I, I joked with you about uh, London. I think we had commented on a forum where I said, listen, you only need a hundred regular clients. And you're like, oh, sure. <laughs> but the thing is, you know, let's say, the, what is the population of London? Do you know? Yeah, 8 million. Actually, I, okay. I made, I made so, a little joke myself. I, I said, there is, I, it was on my Instagram, this, it, and I put up shocking fact, big capital letters, shocking fact. Uh, there's 8 million people in London that haven't been exposed to a massage with me. Can you believe it? <laughs> yeah. And it's, the thing and is, it's true. you only have to get, have to get in any given week, you only have to get one out of a million people in London to get a session with you. You'd have eight mm. clients each week. That would be a huge income boost. You know, it's mm. like you're, you're blanketing the marketplace with information and video content and making yourself known. And then you don't worry about the people who don't want your service. Mm. Some people are gonna see this and they're gonna say, I don't really like those guys. And it's like, so yeah. go do your thing. Yeah. But the thing is, you'll find people who do like it, and those are the people you have to focus on, and that's where it becomes like increasingly niche. Like I really like to see um, the content and information you were putting out about going to do martial arts because yeah. it's a, a, an interesting, like unique kind of niche uh, group of individuals who can use massage and body work. Yeah. Oh God. Yeah. No. No. Absolutely. I mean, the injuries people you know pick up doing martial arts and what have you. Oh, by the way, forgive me. Uh, hi there, Charlotte. Um, if you're still around, be good to get, you know good to hear from you. You know, uh, Charlotte Preston. She's um, she's a UK-based uh, massage therapist and yoga teacher as well. Um, yeah. And that's that's one thing I've always always. I think this is something that uh, that you're you're trying to uh, trying to introduce. I think to other yoga teachers. I mean, in my in my experience, you know, if you're if you're a yoga teacher, and you're not um, and and you're not including a bit of you know, or not including some Thai yoga into your practice, I think you're miss you're missing out, especially when it's like for one on one stuff. I mean, how could you not want to include yeah. something like Thai yoga massage or perhaps reboot into into your sessions? You know, it's um, yeah. yeah, it's a no brainer. It's just. You know, so much of it is even within our own industry, um, like Thai massage is kind of a niche uh, amongst mm -hmm. the, the greater umbrella of massage. There's so many different modalities and things, and even therapists don't always understand it. So how do we expect the public to know anything? The reason I started Thai Massage Jam here in Austin was it was just a free community giveaway and educational resource. You know, the reason I put up that free Thai massage workbook people can download on my website is because it was education, you know, it was like, just yeah. show the people what you do, give them some information, just continue to communicate to them about the benefits. Um, in the United States right now, we have an opiate epidemic. Uh, people are taking huge amounts of opiates. We have a, an opiate problem in the country, but yeah. people are dealing with pain. But the thing is, we, we offer something that's a, you know, drug-free way of managing pain. Um, we yeah. have big problems in the West. I don't know exactly how it is in Britain, um, but I know yeah. that in uh, the United States, there's just a, a problem. People don't get enough touch. Yeah, 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 absolutely. Yeah, people don't get enough yeah. touch here. There's, I think, you know, as um, as time goes on, I think um, uh, I used to I used to blame uh, technology quite quite a lot for um, for for people not being as social, especially like in, in big cities. But now we have uh, social media, we have Twitter, and now we can talk live. And now I, I see a lot more people like, you know, getting involved, even watching like Stuart Wood is watching uh, Patricia Criola. It would be good to um, see you contribute something as well. P uh, Patricia is also another massage therapist, or a Thai yoga massage therapist yeah. and a yoga teacher. Cool. Um, yeah, so I used to I used to blame that, but now like I think technology can like start to bring people together a lot more. You know, if it wasn't for, uh, for Facebook and stuff, and yeah, it's you know. it's an extension. Um, yeah. A lot of the stuff we talk about in business, for instance, nothing replaces you know going to a networking event and shaking hands and handing out business cards. Mm -hmm. But increasingly, the cell phone and the technology we have with social media is a digital business card. I mean, listen, you know, Michael's in Las Vegas, Nevada. I'm in Austin, Texas. You're in London, England. We're all yeah. communicating simultaneously like around the world on this little digital device for free. 
There, yeah. there was never a time in human history where this sort of communication existed this easily. Yeah, no, abs absolutely, and it's uh, and it's great, and I think um, you know when people when people say to me, "Oh, how do you how do you get clients?" I mean, I think I, I assisted on a massage course once, and that was the first question. And um, twelve years down the line, when somebody asked me a question, well, "How do you how do you get clients?" I'm thinking, "Well, you know what? I'm still I'm still learning how to do this myself," you know. Um, but the only thing I was able really to give the, give them is to produce is to produce content and to constantly be putting yourself out there. I mean, some people used to say, I think it was you that gave me the advice. You know, is it business cards? Is it um, speaking to people? Is it like putting out content on online? And you said it was all of those things. I mean, and actually, it is. I think um, the the last the last client I had, I handed out a business card. Which had my um, which had my website on there. She also looked at the website. She looked at my blogs. Uh, she looked at my video content, and then she got in touch through my Facebook business page. So she actually used all you know all of my stuff to finally yeah. book in, book in a session. You know, so mm -hmm. um, you, you just yeah. I mean, I, I I would I'd imagine this time next year. I mean, I gave myself a a target to produce 200 videos on my uh, on my YouTube account, and yeah. actually, nearly every every other day, I just check on how many subscribers I'm getting, and I'm, I'm I'm getting it like one more, one more, one more, you know. So I'm now up to about uh, 120 subscribers, and like, yeah. and, I, and I thought to myself, in the grand scheme of things, this isn't really big. But then again, I I just found out that I've I've got more subscribers than some politicians in this country. So that's for me. That's a big deal. That that's huge. <laughs> yeah, it's just it's just growth. It, you know, when I said you know you do all of it, like you'd mentioned, it's really just being willing to try ten different things and find the two that work really well for you. You know, you mm. seem to be very adept at video production, and when I say that, I mean just with your phone or you know whatever. But you seem to be fearless in just going out and doing it. And the thing is, to be able to make really good videos, you know, with high production value, you have to start out making bad videos. What the problem is, is people are afraid to make mistakes, and that's why they're losing. It's like when, I, when my friend said that the, the, the perfect is the enemy of the done, meaning yep. the perfect is the enemy of the good enough. Just start. Yep. Just keep going, keep talking to people. You know, if you did public speaking engagements, you might be nervous. But by the time you did 100 public speaking engagements, it would be yeah. better. The same thing happens with video production. Yeah, I mean, right right now, it's, um, you know, when I was, when, when, when I first started like, producing videos, um, yeah, it was just like constantly, just, be, just I just felt like I was being ignored, you know, until until I, I went onto another group and I just put up a video. It was another massage group and I put up, put up a video and, um, and like the, the amount of negative comments I got from those videos. But at the same time, I felt great because, you know, here I am. And I think, I think it was in the two, first two months of me producing these, these videos. I was so grateful that I just had some communication from, from it. But the, um, but the, uh, the criticisms were, um, you know, it was like, well, they said, well, the, 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 main, the main criticism was from other therapists, uh, and they, they seem to be specifically Thai massage therapists. It's just like, well, you know, it just seemed a bit too, like, you know, you're, you're, um, you're just putting yourself out there a little bit too much. You know, I, you know, if I was watching it, I wouldn't want to book in through this particular uh, video. And, and that, that really interested me because like, you know, I am interested in building up a client base, you know, because I feel like, you know, I have a service that I want to be able to, you know, to deliver to everybody, you know, and, um, and, and the response was, well, you know, normally the type of person I would go to would be the sort of person that doesn't really advertise that somebody like, you know, um, that's, that's a little bit hidden away. Um, and I'm thinking to myself, well, is that the sort of therapist you want to be? You know, do you want to hide yourself away and then just hope that somebody, you know, you know, like find you, you know, most of people's response has more to do with them than it has to do with you. Mm. So I'll, oh. I'll put out videos and I put out lots of videos and people have all sorts of responses. And often mm. I feel like sometimes other massage therapists occasionally 
will respond negatively. They'll, you know, downvote it, un dislike it, you know, write negative comments because Unfortunately, what it does is it holds up a mirror and what it shows them is they're not doing anything. Mm. Yeah. I might be doing it badly. I might be doing it badly, but I'm doing something. And that's frustrating to somebody sometimes who's not doing anything. Yeah. Well, you know, I have to, I have to say it's like, you know, I've, I've, I've said this to, to loads, loads, loads of other mass martial therapists, you know, especially, you know, here, here in London, I say to them, well, you know, are you producing anything? Are you doing stuff on, on camera? Are you giving talks? Are you doing, and like, oh no, I, I couldn't do this. Oh no, 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 I couldn't. Uh... But, you know, I mean, I, I used to say that as well, but what I've come to realize is that, well, that means that I'm probably the only one that's that's doing it. You know, I'm probably one of the, or one of the very few, or one in a million that's um, that's doing it. And uh, now that you, you know, if you were to type in Twina London or Massage London, I'll probably come up on the, on the first, on the first page on YouTube, you know, and that, and people, and people in other businesses, you know, whether it's plumbing, building, you know, they, they would kill for something like that. So, yeah, I'm just going to keep, I'm just going to keep, you know, keep continuing. It takes time. Um, it yeah. It doesn't happen overnight. It does take time. In a couple years, my guess is you're going to be teaching other massage therapists because they're going to start coming to you trying to figure out how you created such a lucrative practice. They're they're gonna they're gonna be like, I don't understand. I don't have any clients, and this guy, you know, is booked all the time. Yeah, well, I think I think it it, it will take it will take quite a bit of time because at, at this point, I seem to think that um, when people think of massage over here, they just in, in some cases, I think they almost feel guilty. You know, they're in pain and they're, they're going to tell their friends, oh, I'm going to go book, you know, book in a massage. It's like, oh, yeah, lucky you. Because like, no, 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 you don't understand. I'm in pain here. I really need to get something fixed. Yes. So that's, um, so I think I'm going to be doing, I'm going to be producing a lot more content on, on specific things, whether it's neck pain, back pain, shoulder pain, you know, yep. all of that sort of stuff. And, and I'll, I'll have to put it in a, in, a, in, in a format. Where, where you're at now, are you slowly noticing that you're you're funneling down to like a niche market? Like, in other words, when you started making video content, it wasn't quite as focused. And then over time, it's like, oh, pain relief, focusing on this, focusing on specialty, focusing on niche market. Um, I think I've always, I've because because I've come from a tweener background, so that's like you know traditional Chinese medicine background, and um, I don't know how much I, I don't know how much coverage you get a tweener in, in where you are at the moment, but I um, hi there Sterling, he's he's given us loads of uh, hearts there, so yeah, great. Um, I don't know, um, yeah. So for 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 tweener, it's very much like a musculoskeletal based, you know. So if you were in China, and if you were hi there Lola, how you doing? So if you are, if you are in China and uh, you ended up in a traditional Chinese medicine hospital uh, with a back problem, a neck problem, the likelihood is you would receive, you know, tweener bodywork, you know, along with uh, acupuncture, you know, cupping therapy, you know, guasa, you know, all what people know in, in the West now, especially amongst chiropractors as the Graston technique. Yeah. Um, so I've always, I've always been like, you know, focused in on uh, musculoskeletal problems. But what I've come to realize is that what gets more attention on my YouTube videos is actually uh, massaging another body, having another body in in the room, and me talking into the camera uh, and telling people, yeah. you know, exactly what it is I'm doing, what muscles I'm working, uh, what I'm stretching, and that sort of thing, and how I can help. And that's that's something that I'd like to do more in the future. Although what what I'm finding difficult at the moment is finding willing bodies to be in front of the camera. Um, that's my challenge right now. <laughs> <laughs> Depending you're not around you just, here in London, you know, I'm sure you'd be all right with that. You just, yeah, you know, you go to the local dance studio and you put up a flyer and you let people mm -hmm. know that you're looking for people to do little 15 minute sessions on. Um, you know, so dance studio. You pick a dance studio, you mm. talk to them, um, and basically you set up an event and say, listen, I'm going to set up in this one facility. The table's set up. You get four or five people to line up and you just shoot a video with each of them. It's free to them, but it's content yeah. for you. Actually, you know, you've got a that's a that's a good point. Actually, you know, I don't know if I've told you this, but you know, I've had a I've got a dance background, and I've never oh, I've yeah. never thought about that. Yeah. So I originally I originally trained as a dancer many many moons ago, 
uh, until I until I suffered a herniated disc and yeah, so I ended up um, you know taking my interest in the body and putting it into you know into my uh, into into my massage practice and my acupuncture practice and what have you. Although I don't do as much acupuncture these days. Um, by the way, hi there, Ash. Um, Ash is a great guy. Those of you that are watching, he's a Penjack Select practitioner. Um, he comes from a really good uh, lineage as well. So um, you know, if you ever get a chance, like check out his uh, Facebook page and uh, go to his classes. He's a great guy. Had uh, had lunch with him. He's a really great person to talk to. Um, Ash, if you're around, oh, by the way, Lola, if you're around Sterling, please leave a message down below. Um, if you want to say anything, have any questions about anything, uh, please do. Um, please do. Uh, no, put them forward, mate. I mean, are you um, are you quite tired at the moment? Because I know you said it's what it's, must be what past uh, three o'clock, and I don't want to keep you up if you're. Um... I mean, I'm, no, no, I'm I'm a I'm a total night owl for better or worse. So. <laughs> yeah. Oh, you've you've seen you've seen my room here, by the way. I know, I know you you don't normally work on these these days. You know, on the on tables. I think you want to. <laughs> So not part of your vo vocabulary anymore, not part of your repertoire. Well, I, I revisit it again and again. I'm, I'm still teaching table-based stuff, but mainly it's to get people to transition uh, clients to the mat. But eh, I think the, the bias I have is it's so fixated on table work in the States that it's a little more challenging to work on a mat because consumers aren't familiar with it. Yeah. I mean, for me, I think because I've I've had to be um, I've had to be very flexible and everything. You know, I've I've had to go where the work is basically. So I've become very um, yeah, uh, you know, adaptable. So I there are times when they say like, oh, there's um, yeah, there's a there's a table here. You know, would you be able to do a quick fifteen minutes? Say you sure? Yeah, no problem. And I've been I've been around tired massage practitioners and I've been around shiatsu practitioners and they're. they're you know, there's been like mats everywhere. I said, oh, um, would you be able to show us what you do? So yeah, sure. Just put them on the floor and, you know, I'll do my tweener on the floor because that's originally where I've, where I've come from. Um, yeah. And I've, um, I've, I've also, I've also looked at some, um, some video clips as well, which I've incorporated on the on-site massage chair. Um, they've, um, they, they introduced like quite, quite a few, like, you know, time yoga massage, uh, manipulations and stretches and mobilizations as well which a lot of people um don't really do not as much over here so i'd like to be able to do another video on that as well because a lot of people when i'm doing yeah. events with um uh with a group of other uh, massage therapists they, they always 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 look at what i do and think oh what's this technique that you use especially when i'm when i'm using the tweener uh, rolling technique they really want they're really quite interested in what i do so i've got to i've got to put together put together another video there's so many videos now i'm realizing even just talking with you just realizing that i need to produce a lot more uh a lot more stuff um make a just, list yeah actually you know, you know what you're right and i think um one of the one of these i mean i've got I'm, i don't want to give too much away but i need to do it put like put together like a nice little format where it's um yeah where, where my stuff is a lot so more easier when, to when you say when you say you don't want to give too much away what does that mean Oh, um, <laughs> well, because, you know, I've got, um, uh, you know, I, I said to you before, I want to, I want to put together an app. So I've got a, I've got a, I've, I've got some ideas of what I'd like to put on there, but I don't want to yeah. tell everything, you know, it's, uh, you know, it's my, oh, it's okay. my little, uh, no, I, I thought you meant, but, yeah, yeah. I thought when you, what you meant was when you make videos, you don't want to give them too much information. Or you don't want to give them too oh, many right. techniques or something. I thought that was what you were saying. Oh no, I think I think I think in this I think in this day and age it's all um, it's all available anyway, you know. But I think uh, the reason why people want to uh, you know do courses and it's just to know that they have that knowledge you know in here, so they have to go through that process of you know going to class. Um, knowing that you know what they're doing is correct and getting that getting that qualification yeah. at the end, but you know the information is all out there, you know, and this is this is a great time to be to be around, you know, because I mean there was there was a time when I wanted, to, I mean like when we were in school, um, if we you know if we had to go off and uh, write an essay about something, you know, you'd have to go to the library, you'd have to get the book, and you'd have to you know flick through the pages and find something, but now it's just like you just you you know you you know. You'd have to go. Well, you have to go on your PC, but now you can just go go on your phone and you know get all the information. And, and that's a really interesting point. The, the The difference is we have 
a greater ease of access to information, but there's so much information, what do we actually pay attention to? And from mm. a marketing standpoint, we pay attention to what gets our attention. And the thing is, mm. from an educator standpoint, you have to give more value and more valuable information. Um, if it's a funny video, it needs to be really funny. If it's a sexy video, it needs to be really sexy. Whatever it is that gets people's attention to get them to watch, you know, yeah. because, because now there's so much information across multiple platforms that it's like, what do people pay attention to? Because yeah. the, the, what, we're, what we're trading is attention. Yeah. Yeah. Well, I, th I think, well, I think I said this before, it's like, what's, um, you know, what's, what's helping me is that there's not, there's not a lot of people, you know, doing what, what I'm doing, you know, I mean, there's a lot of massage therapists out there. Uh, not a lot of like tweener practitioners out there. There's a few like, you know, Thai yoga massage practitioners, but the one thing that they're not doing is doing what we're doing right here, right now. And that, and just yeah. being in front of the camera and, and yeah. chatting away. Yeah, the thing is, in the United States, it's been a little bit of, um, uh, contentious uh, with me and other time massage teachers because they won't embrace technology to communicate with people. And the more I did it, the more my notoriety grew and my classes were growing and everything was, was working well business wise. And you could tell that some of the teachers were frustrated, but it's not because anybody's holding them back. It's just because they were unwilling to use the technology to communicate with people. Yeah. I mean, like my, my, my frustration, and I suppose why my frustration is still maybe to this day is like, you know, what, what the hell do I do? You know, um, cause I went through the whole process. I mean, this is, this is long before like social media became a big thing, but I did the whole like leafleting thing. I did the whole, put the notice, you know, on the cafe thing and, um, nothing, nothing was coming from that. Nothing was coming from that at all. And, um, and now that we've got this, I mean, look, you know, I'm not, I'm not super busy at the moment. So, here are, you know, and when people complain about, oh, I haven't got any any clients. Well, this look what I'm doing at the moment. I am doing something that's productive. You know, I am actually getting yeah. in front of the camera and talking about about therapies and what have you. And you know, so like you know, there, I mean, there, there, there would have been a, there would have been a time when people would have spent really good money just to do something like this, and it's absolutely free. Oh and yeah, yeah. yeah. So just. You know, just as an idea, and sometimes mm. these sorts of off-the-cuff interviews are really nice because it makes you look at things from a different perspective. Uh, you know what yeah. a sandwich board is? A sandwich board? No, go on. Uh, tell me. Yeah. So a sandwich board is usually – it's like um, it's like a little a board that you can write on with, like, chalk or a marker, and it's usually yeah. sh shaped like this, and it stands – like outside of, like, restaurants or bars sometimes, they'll put it up, so they'll put, like, the specials of the day on it. Oh, yeah, 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 I've, I've seen, yeah, yeah, I've seen that. Yeah, yeah. So the thing is, if, if, if you had a sandwich board and mm. you show up at, you, you talk to the owner of a local coffee shop, the local yeah. coffee shop owner says that you can set up on the sidewalk in front of the coffee shop, and all you do is set up your equipment, you've got a tripod, you've got yeah. your phone, you're, you're going to Facebook Live, and basically, you just give away free, like, 10-minute chair massages in oh. exchange for a brief an exchange for a brief interview and then you like talk to the camera while you're working on them because the public gets something for free the coffee shop owner gets an added service that people might you know want at his facility yeah. and you get more video content and the thing is mm. that right there it's it's free that's what mm. massage therapists in my experience they don't understand and they're not taking advantage of yeah, 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 absolutely. You know, I had I had a similar I had a similar sort of idea, but it wasn't wasn't as com as as commercial as what you were doing. I wanted to to also help promote other people, so like other artists, other musicians, and you know, actors and what have you. You know, um, so what I wanted to su suggest to them was, uh, you know, I'll, as I'm giving like a like a massage treatment to them, so they could even be fully clothed, so doing a Thai massage on them, and um, you know, so let's say for example, if you were uh, an actor and you're and you're doing a, an amateur show somewhere, um, I could be interviewing that, that particular actor while I'm giving him a massage or her an, uh, a massage. And that person could be talking, uh, talking about their particular show. 
thing and and the um and and the, the the whole interview wouldn't even involve me talking about massage at all it could even be just totally focused on them but because they see the massage and because and because they're talking about that you know both both of us you know both of us win really you know in terms of getting our message across but that was very very difficult yeah. to get up off the ground but what you're suggesting uh, there is uh, really good i'm just having a i'm just going to have a quick read of what patricia just um, just wrote there thanks for the chats uh, thanks for the chat I have to go now yoga and then helping someone to heal her shoulder with some hot herbal compresses. Keep the good work going. People out there need us. Oh, no, thank you. I really appreciate that, Patricia. Unfortunately, um, nobody's watching us right now, but I really appreciate that. And so I hope she'll, uh, she'll watch this. That's really appreciated. And uh, no, it's really good that we're getting, we're getting some attention here. So we've had an atten some attention for, from Sterling, from Patricia, um, Sophie Richardson, she's a, I believe she, she's a tweener practitioner as well. She did, she studied at the same place where I, where I, I studied. Um, yeah, Lola's been watching. Lola's a fantastic practitioner um, who I feel um, really needs to be, uh, needs to be out there more and, uh, and treating more people um, because she's got like, she's so put together lots of really great skills. You're, you're making tons of video content. You're now starting mm -hmm. to interview people. When, when you think about the clients that you really want to work with in London, mm. who are those clients? What are those people like? Oh, they're, um, you know, when I, I'll tell you, I'll tell you something. When I first graduated uh, from massage school, because of my dance background, um, I, 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 want, I wanted to work with like, you know, professional athletes and, um, you know, and other, and other dancers, because I knew, you know, I knew, well, specifically more, you know, more with dancers because I knew what you know, they were putting their bodies through, and uh, that that fell by the wayside very, very quickly. As soon as I started knocking on doors, um, I think I said, to, I thought to myself, well, I'll start, I'll start at the very, very top and then work my way down. So I knocked on the door. This is this is exactly what I did, right? I knocked on the door of the Royal Ballet Company. And I walked in there and I said, okay, hi there, everybody. I'm James Carolyn. Oh, by the way, my, my real name is James Carolyn. I'm known as Patrick Chris on my Facebook, but that's, that's a different story. So I knocked on their door and I said, okay, well, you know, this is who I am. This is what I do. Here's my card. And uh, they just looked at me and said, look, we've really got massage therapists here. He goes, okay, well, do you have acupuncturists here? He goes, yeah. Um, yeah, we have everything here. Hypnotherapists, uh, Pilates teachers, yoga teachers, um, acupuncturists, uh, homeopaths, uh, psychotherapists, uh, hypnotists. And, and I'm like, oh, OK. And just wouldn't let me in through the through the door. I tried it with the English National Ballet. I tried it with Ron Bear Company. And um, actually, there was. And then what I did was I went I went on um, I went online and I, I looked at a list of, dan of dance companies and it was. Um, Actually, there was only there was only one one company that uh, that replied, and I and I um and I knocked I knocked on the door, and it was in a bar somewhere, and I thought, what? Why is this in a bar? And then I went into the basement where they said that they they were, and I knocked on the door, and I opened the door, and this was back in two thousand and six, and um, I opened the door, and they were all pole dancers, and I was like, there I was, like surrounded by you know by women not wearing much, and um, not knowing where to look. And I thought, okay, and um, and then I, so like I, I spoke to the the owner and said, okay, you can set up there, and um, so what it was really was just me like you know just giving away like in like ten minute sessions, you know, um, yeah, and it was just there to help promote. So I've got like about one or two clients uh, from from that, you know, um, but there was that that was that was during that was during the time when um, you know when when pole dancing was coming out of the strip clubs and more into like mainstream gyms and uh, where they were, they were doing like you know like a pole dance teacher training thing, yeah, and that was yeah. that, that, that was quite an interesting thing. But uh, you know, looking back looking back on that now, it would have been better for me to you know if I had that social media exposure as well. So I say uh, right here I am going to a, a, a dance school. You know, setting up my camera. Yeah. Well, of course, getting consent from everybody there. You know, and saying this is, you know, this is who I'm working on. Are you in pain? And this, that, and the other, and and setting it up that way. You know, yeah. So sorry, I, I forgot your original original okay. question. Oh, well, is, do I have like a particular name? What I'm oh, wondering is, yeah, yeah. yeah, who do you want to work with? Who are those people? What are they like? Oh yes. Oh, the main the main sort of people I'm going to be working with are just people in chronic pain 
and that's ultimately what you know I've been um, I've been trained. So uh, when I when I did my original when I did my original leaflet, it was I put I put up there like between uh, which I was trained up at the time. That was my main therapy, and it was I put it up as the direct approach to stress and pain management, and I. And that, and that's what I that's what I live by. You know, if somebody says to you, well, what, what exactly do you do? You know, I offer a direct hands-on approach to stress and pain management, and uh, that's really those are the type of people that I want to be working with. You know, uh, people yeah. who want to you know improve their condition and live a um, a more uh, you know a more uh, pain-free life, and living you know living you know being able and being able to move you know better and just yeah. you know having a better sense of, the, of, of overall well-being that's really what i'm uh, i'm trying to encourage with a lot of a lot of people through and also through, now that i'm a qualified yoga teacher like when i talk about helping people move better that's what um, that's what i try and try and encourage them to do as well so people who come and see me for so you go to a yoga studio and again same same sort of thing we talked about at the coffee shop because mm. yoga is probably a good like compliment right but you find yeah. a yoga studio, you work with a yoga teacher, and here's what you do. They're going to teach like an hour class. Yeah. The students are going to try like a pose, and -hmm. then after they do a pose or two or warm up, you do a little bit of massage on them and say, listen, now go try trikonasana. We yeah. just worked on your hamstrings. We worked on your legs. Now I want you to go triangle, try triangle pose again. And when they go into the pose again, they're going to go, oh, my God. Like I'm – I'm able to go into it more easily. And it's like, yeah, because these are mutually like beneficial and compatible, you know, forms of work that facilitate each other. Yeah. No, awesome. No, that's, that's great. I'm going to try the whole um, cafe thing. Cause I think the, um, the, the smaller independent businesses are more likely to, um, to want to, to want to talk, you know, cause I, there's a, there's a gym that I, um, that I go to and it's, and it's a very, it's a, it's a corporate, it's a big change in, and I said, oh, would I, you know, could I, uh, could I leave a few of my business cards? And like they said, oh, the, the person at the front at the reception said, okay, let me get the manager. The manager turned up and then he said, okay, well, you need to speak to head office. And I'm like, okay, do you have the, do you have the details? And I was like, okay, well, look, I'll just give you the phone number and here's the email address. And I, and I looked at it and I said, like, you know, how much, how much trouble am I going to have to go through just to leave a few business cards? And you know, and I know that leaving a few business cards just in a cafe isn't quite going to cut it. We need a lot more, you know. So this is, I mean, like the um, the business cards, the, um, uh, the the leaflets is only like a tiny, tiny little thing of of the big of the big picture. So, yeah, me having to contact somebody, you know, to email them, to wait for them to get back to me is just not really worth my while. Yeah. You know, if, if people but are on, the, you know, independent if businesses people, are going to. If people are on uh, Facebook or Instagram, mm -hmm. you're shooting video, doing chair massage, talking to them before they even leave. You just tell them, listen, take out your phone, follow me on Instagram, you know, send me yeah. like a quick video message. I'm happy to give you 10% off like your first session with me if you do that. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. That's really it's like there's, there's, there's no loss. You win, they win, the coffee shop wins, your community wins. <laughs> yeah. 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 Absolutely. Oh man, I really hope there's other other massage therapists like you know watching this right now. It only looks like there's only one person uh, well, watching. Even if they're not, them. you take this video and you share this video in the massage entrepreneurs group, mm. and then you're providing more value again and again and again and again. Yeah. Yeah. So listen, it's getting late here. I'm gonna go to bed. Yeah, yeah. You go to sleep. What what, what time is it now? What three uh, thirty, four o'clock now? Three, just after three thirty. Yeah. Oh yeah, oh mate, you know, get 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 to sleep, dude. You know, you never, you never ever, you you don't rest really, do you? <laughs> oh no, no, today was my day off. I took it easy, so. Oh, okay, excellent. Yeah, I need to start following my own advice and get right. some rest myself. Well, thank thank you so much, Robert. And um, I'm hopefully oh, we'll welcome. do a few more of these. Oh, um, one thing I was going to say, like at some point in the future, I want to do. Um, I think we mentioned um, cupping therapy. Um, I want to do like yeah. a cupping video, uh, cupping therapy video. Um, if you know, if you like, what we can do is we can do this. We can do this live, you know, like the same sort of format. And if you want to ask me anything yeah. while I'm doing cupping, then we can we can do that. Oh, sometime. sure, sure. Yeah, cupping is something I actually don't know a huge amount about. Um, I have a mm -hmm. lot of questions about it, so yeah. it'd be interesting to do that. Fantastic. 
Robert. Cool. Yeah, it'd be great. And uh, have a great have a great sleep, my friend. Until next I time. I will. Thank you so much. You have you have a great okay. night. You too, sir. Take care. Bye now.